health and hygiene. Health is a state of complete physical and mental well-being. A healthy person is one whose body and mind are completely fit. To stay healthy. Components of food. We eat different types of food which give us energy to work and play, to grow and to make our body strong and healthy. Food contains some essential substances called nutrients. Our food contains five main nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins and minerals. It also contains roughage and water. Our body needs all these components in right proportion to stay healthy. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates give us energy. Sugar and starch are two main types of carbohydrates. Cereals, fruits, corn, potato and honey are some sources of carbohydrates. We need carbohydrates to do heavy physical work. Fats. Like carbohydrates, fats also give energy to us. In fact, fats give more energy than carbohydrates. Vegetable oil, milk, butter, ghee, cheese, cream and dry fruits are some sources of fats. Eating too much fat can be harmful. Excess eating of fatty foods can make us obese, fat. Obesity can cause diabetes and heart disease. Both fats and carbohydrates give us energy, so they are called energy-giving foods. Proteins. Proteins help us grow. We need proteins for growth, building of muscles and for repairing worn-out tissues. Proteins are also called bodybuilding food. Milk, cheese, chicken, fish, eggs, nuts, ulcers and soya bean are rich in proteins. Growing children like you need more proteins. Vitamins. Vitamins help our body fight against diseases and keep us healthy and fit. Fruits, eggs, fishes and green leafy vegetables are some sources of vitamins. Only a little amount of each vitamin is required by our body. But lack of any vitamin in our body causes diseases. For example, lack of vitamin A causes night blindness. Minerals keep our body healthy and fit. They make our bones and muscles strong and maintain the normal functioning of our body. Iron, calcium, iodine and phosphorus are some important minerals needed by our body. Green leafy vegetables, fruits, milk, egg and salt are rich sources of minerals. The lack of minerals in our body may cause diseases. For example, lack of iron in our body causes a disease called anemia and lack of iodine causes goiter. Vitamins and minerals are called protective foods because they protect our body from various diseases. Roughage and water. Along with these five nutrients, our body also needs proper amount of roughage and water. Roughage are the fibers present in our food. They help us get rid of undigested food. Some sources of roughage are whole grains, cereals, green vegetables and fruits. Water is an important component of our body. About two-thirds of our body weight is water. Water helps in removing wastes from our body through sweat and urine. It also helps to maintain the temperature of our body. Thus, we should drink about six to eight glasses of water every day. Balanced diet. A diet that contains the right proportion of different nutrients, roughage and water needed for the healthy functioning of our body is called balanced diet. For healthy eating, the foods of balanced diet are divided into four groups. These are as follows. Cereal group. This group contains foods like rice, chapati and bread, which are rich in carbohydrates and minerals. Vegetable and fruit group. It contains Fruits and vegetables, which are rich in minerals, vitamins, roughage, fibers, and carbohydrates. Milk group. It contains milk, cheese, and curd, which are rich in proteins, fats, and minerals, especially calcium. Protein group. It contains foods like meat, fish, eggs, beans, nuts, and peas, which are rich in proteins and fats. 
we should eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and lesser amount of fatty foods. Always make sure that your meal contains food items from all food groups every day. Preserving nutrients of food. Only eating right amount of food items is not sufficient for our health. The food we eat should be properly washed, cooked and stored so that its nutritional value is not lost. Fruits and vegetables when eaten raw should be washed properly to make them free from dust and chemicals. Food should be cooked with care so that its nutrition are not lost. Overcooking destroys the nutrients of food. Raw and cooked food should be stored properly otherwise they get spoilt due to germs. Food can be stored in refrigerator for a few days and in deep freezer for several weeks. Other methods of preservation of food are dehydration, canning, salting, sweetening, pickling and adding preservatives. Diseases When we are sick, we don't feel good. A disease is a condition in which our body or a part of it does not function properly. Diseases are caused due to many reasons. They are of two types, non-communicable and communicable. Non-communicable diseases Diseases that do not spread from one person to another are called non-communicable diseases. Some non-communicable diseases are caused due to the deficiency of nutrients like carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins or minerals in our diet. These are called deficiency diseases. Some of the deficiency diseases are given in the table below. Carbohydrates, marasmus, the child becomes so thin that loose folds of skin can be seen all over the body. The ribs of the child are also visible. Proteins, kwashirkar, the abdomen of the child gets swollen and bulges out. The legs become thin. Iron, anemia, very low number of red blood cells in blood, extreme fatigue, weakness, pale skin, iodine, coiter, swelling of the thyroid gland present near the neck region, calcium and phosphorus, improper development of bones and teeth, the bones and teeth become weak and brittle, vitamin A, night blindness. A person cannot see in dim light. Vitamin B. Beriberi. Skin becomes dry and scaly. Extreme weakness. Affects the nervous system and muscles. Vitamin C. Scurvy. Swelling and bleeding of gums. Vitamin D. Rickets. Bow legs. Bent legs. Bending of the spine. Communicable diseases. The diseases that can spread from one person to another are called communicable diseases. These diseases are called by microorganism called germs. The microorganisms like bacteria, virus and fungi are present everywhere in air, water or food. They can enter our body through various means and cause diseases. Some of the communicable diseases caused by the microorganisms are as follows germs diseases bacteria cholera pneumonia tuberculosis typhoid plague meningitis viruses common cold flu polio chickenpox measles aids protozoa malaria dysentery spread of communicable diseases Germs can travel from a sick person's body and enter a healthy person's body to cause disease and infection. This can happen in the following ways. Through the air. When a sick person coughs, sneezes or spits, some germs from his body go into the air. When a healthy person breathes in this air, the germs enter his body and make him sick. Common cold diphtheria, viral fever, whooping cough and measles 
spread through the air. Through infected food and water. Food and water may get infected with germs when they are not stored properly. Germs come to dust and insects like flies and cockroaches. Eating infected food and drinking infected water cause diseases. Diarrhea, typhoid, jaundice, cholera and various digestive disorders spread through infected food and water. Number 3. Through direct contact. A healthy person can get germs by coming in contact with an infected person, his clothing or other things used by him. Chicken pox, ringworm, whooping cough, measles spread through direct contact. Through insects, blood-sucking insects such as mosquitoes and fleas can spread various diseases like malaria, dengue and plague. When a female, Anopheles mosquito bites a sick person suffering from malaria. It sucks the malarial germs along with the blood of the sick person. When it bites a healthy person, the malarial germs pass into the victim's blood and make him or her sick. Similarly, Aedes mosquitoes spread dengue and rat fleas spread plague. Through damaged skin, our skin acts as a protective covering and prevents the entry of germs. When our skin gets damaged, germs can enter easily and cause diseases. Germs of tetanus, a disease, enter our body through cuts in the skin. Prevention of communicable diseases The various ways to prevent communicable diseases are given below. Bathe daily with soap and clean water to keep yourself clean. The house should be disinfected. The house should have good ventilation, windows and open spaces to get proper sunlight because sunlight is a natural disinfectant. Drinking water should be clean and pure. Always use filtered and boiled water. Water purifiers or UV filters should be used to clean the water. Your surroundings should be neat and clean. Water should not stagnate in the surroundings because it may become the breeding ground for mosquitoes and flies. Garbage should always be kept in covered bins. The children should be vaccinated against diseases like tuberculosis, diphtheria and hepatitis. Vaccination This is an effective way of preventing communicable diseases. Vaccines are made of small quantities of very weak germs of a particular disease. They are given orally or injected into the child's body. When they enter the body, the body produces substances capable of fighting the germs of that disease. This creates immunity against a particular disease. Many diseases like hepatitis, tuberculosis, chickenpox, mumps and tetanus can be controlled through vaccines. Some common vaccines that are given to all children are polio vaccine to prevent polio, DPT vaccine to prevent diphtheria, tetanus and perthesis, MMR vaccine to prevent measles, mumps and rubella. Hygiene. Hygiene may be defined as good habits that ensure cleanliness and good health. Proper hygiene helps us in preventing diseases. Following are some steps to maintain hygiene. We should wash our hands with soap and water before eating food and after going to the toilet. We should bathe daily. We should brush our teeth twice daily in the morning and before going to sleep in the night. We should cut our nails regularly under an adult supervision. Kitchen, floor, toilet and bathroom should be cleaned with disinfectants regularly. Our food should be properly covered. We should keep our surroundings clean. We should not throw garbage in the open. Dustbins should be covered properly. Water should not be allowed to collect in old tires, drums and buckets because mosquitoes breed in stagnant water. There should be wire screens or nets on the doors and windows of the houses to prevent the entry of flies and mosquitoes. Exercise. 
Regular exercise is essential to stay healthy and fit. Exercise improves our blood circulation, digestion and tones up our muscles. When we exercise, more oxygen is supplied to the brain. Playing outdoor games like cricket, football and hockey also keep us fit. Yoga, swimming, cycling, walking and running are some other good exercises. Adequate rest. Proper rest and sleep relax our muscles and give our body much needed rest for its proper functioning. After having a good rest, we feel fresh and ready to work again. To stay healthy, an adult needs six to eight hours of sleep in a day. Inadequate sleep can make us sick. Staying up late and watching television is a bad habit. Posture. Posture is the position in which we hold our body when we sit, stand or move. While standing or sitting, we must keep our back straight. Leaning forward while reading put extra pressure on our back and eyes. Correct posture gives us a graceful appearance while incorrect posture over a long period of time can make us sick.